organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, getting around campus, find out how students with disabilities get up and down the Pentecrest Hill. And UI President Sally Mason has new plans for preventing sexual assault on campus. And in sports? A whole lot of football on the program as we take a look at this weekend's matchup against Ball State. All this and more ahead on Daily Iowan TV. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Greta Miley. And I'm Nick Fisher. UI President Sally Mason sent an informational email to all students today in an effort to co combat sexual assault on campus. There have been three reported sexual assaults so far this semester. In today's email, Mason refers to her six-point plan to combat sexual assault. She included an updated link with numbers that show progress on the plan. Mason also disclosed that a second student has been expelled as a, res as a result of an assault this summer. The email includes the first set of guidelines that describe the sanctions the university will use on future cases. Mason encourages all students to continue the conversation about sexual violence to make change on campus. Speaking of change on campus, many students struggle to get around campus these first two weeks as finding new classes can be stressful. This is even more difficult for students with disabilities. Daily Iowan TV's Sue Nguyen Wang got an inside scoop on how disabled students are getting around. At the beginning of the semester, we will notice a lot of students either unconscious or with arms in sling. It's hard to get around campus normally. Being injured makes life hard for these UI students. We find some students with injured and ask their feelings on the first week. I was playing soccer on the soccer team here at Iowa, and we were scrimmaging, and I planted my foot and my knee, like fell in, and I uh, went down screaming in pain and I went to get an MRI like the next day and I blew my meniscus and partially tore both of my menisci. I was at cheer practice Wednesday for an open gym and we were doing backflips and um, when I did a backflip on my last one I fractured both my uh, bones in my ankle, the tibia and fibula. There are many students with crunches, and the University of Iowa has a service of a bionic bus. The bionic bus system is a specialized transportation service for persons with disabilities. I had to give them my schedule, uh, and they basically just try to fit me in their schedule for picking me up and taking me back to all my classes. They usually pick me up about a half hour before my class, and will get me there. 20 minutes before, which gives me enough time to get in the building and find my class, so that's really nice. You just kind of wake up like a little bit earlier and say, oh, well, if I was walking, take me 10 minutes. Well, now with these crutches or scooters, it's probably going to take me 20 minutes. So I just add 10 minutes on to whatever it would probably take me to walk. So. And with the injuries, there are many influences on students' school and the social life. An injury like this, where you're not going to be able to play the sport that you have for so long, takes a mental toll. Um, the soccer season's in the fall and I've been having to sit there and watch the game so that's really hard just to have to sit there on the bench and watch and not be able to contribute so the mental part of it definitely takes takes a toll and it's hard to stay positive every day and just kind of keep going. Si Wen Wang, Data I1 TV. The university also offers the bionic bus for students who have difficulties getting around campus. Art students gathered today to eat some ice cream and get to know each other. Undergraduate Art History Society held an ice cream social at Art Building West today. They wanted to promote the school as well as provide new students with an opportunity to get, know people, to, get to know people in the program. It's a great way for students to meet new people, especially incoming students, and for students to get to know their faculty outside of the classroom. The social was held from 4 to 5. And in other news on the UI campus, you might have done some speed networking in the past, but what about speed friending? The University of Iowa Campus Activities Board is holding a speed friending around the world event on Thursday night. That's being held at Old Brick on East Market Street. 
Cab says it's a way to save time making friends. As of Thursday afternoon, their Facebook event says about 60 people plan on attending. Well, I don't know about you, Greta, but I am really excited for this fall weather to come back. I am so with you there, Nick. Actually, yesterday night, the lightning set off the fire alarm in my apartment, so I was out there at 4 a.m. Well, let's catch up with our own Anna Theodosis, because I know she has the update for us on weather. Anna, what do we have to look forward to this week? Well, Greta, unfortunately, I have some bad news. You might be woken up early Friday morning, too. There's a chance of storms starting around 3 a.m. on Friday. That chance of rain will continue into the afternoon while the temperatures start to cool down. By Friday night, that rain will continue and we will get down to the low 60s. Now let's take a look at the rest of the weekend and into next week. Hawkeye football Saturday will have clear skies and even keeled temps coming into the mid 70s. And on Sunday, we should expect more of what we will see on Saturday. Come, Tuesday, come Monday and Tuesday, some clouds will roll in, but temperatures will stay consistent in the mid to high 70s. And on Wednesday, storms could come back into the area, but at least it won't be with cold temperatures, with temperatures expecting to read in the high 70s. That's all I have for you right now. Stay dry tomorrow and enjoy a beautiful weekend. Nick, Greta, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Anna. Well, that weather might not be too good for protests UI students are planning to have tonight. Students are planning a protest in downtown Iowa City because of the recent reports of sexual assaults on campus. The event is planned for 7 o'clock on the pedestrian mall in downtown Iowa City. This is not the first protest UI students have organized. Last February, President Sally Mason was interrupted during the 31st annual presidential lecture. The protest was planned today after the email was sent out from Sally Mason. Well, I hope people catch the game on Saturday. The last one I know was pretty exciting. Yeah, I cannot wait for the game. And with us in this DITV Sports Studio today is the sports team that has everything you need to know, black and gold. Welcome back to the Daily Island TV Sports Studio for this week's edition of the pregame show. Joined by Cody Goodwin, I'm Chelsea Brown. Chelsea, so much to get to on the program tonight with our weekly football preview on in just a bit. We'll also take a look at one wide receiver's journey from Canada to being a threat in the Iowa offense, as well as an exclusive interview with senior captain Louis Tringapassat. That's right, Cody. And you mentioned the weekly football preview, and that's where we'll start. Take a look. Iowa opens up their second game at Kinnick Stadium against the Ball State Cardinals. Ball State, currently 1-0, opened the season with a 30-10 home victory over Colgate. The Cardinals finished the 2013 season at 10-3, including a 7-1 record in the Mid-American Conference. Now the last time Iowa saw Ball State was in 2005, where they demolished the Cardinals 56-0 at Kinnick. The quarterback during this game happened to be Joey Lynch, who is now the current offensive coordinator and quarterback coach for the Cardinals. There will definitely be some old wounds opened up during this game with Iowa leading the series 2-0 and outscoring Ball State 101-0 both times at Kinnick. This matchup this week will be the third time the Hawkeyes face the Cardinals, but the defense will have to attack on the rushing game to stop two Cardinals who averaged over 100 rushing yards apiece in the Colgate win. They include Horatio Banks and touchdown machine Jawan Edwards, who ranked 19th in the nation in rushing touchdowns in 2013. Iowa defense allowed just 25 rushing yards against Northern Iowa, which is the fewest rushing yards allowed by an Iowa defense since holding Minnesota to 7 yards in 2008. Even with quarterback Ozzie Mann with only one game start under his belt with the rushing offense of Banks and Edwards by his side and the Cardinal offense who scored a school record of 501 points last season will have to be stopped. Chelsea Brown, Daily Island TV Sports. Definitely a matchup that most Iowa fans are pretty optimistic about judging on past results. But let's go back to the 2013 season real quick when then-sophomore Tavon Smith was a targetable, targetable receiver and we caught a glimpse of his potential in a 55-yard scoring reception against Michigan last year. But it's now in 2014 that Smith has a chance to establish himself as the go-to guy that almost went unnoticed. Daily Iowan football reporter Jalen Socek has a story. It all started in Ontario, Canada four years ago. Tavon Smith, then a high school junior, had big football dreams. But he wasn't getting the attention he needed. I mean, I wasn't really getting recruited as much uh, on Canada, and I guess our talent wasn't, wasn't as, uh, as good as uh, American talent. Determined to make his dream of playing college football a reality, 
he decided to make a change. A change that involved a new school in a new country 863 miles away from his home of Ontario. So I just wanted, wanted the opportunity, so I just did whatever I could to get out here and uh, make a name for myself. It was there that he finally got the recognition he had been working so hard for. Um, I mean, coming out of Canada, I only, I only was looked at by Syracuse and um, a couple other schools. So, uh, I mean, once I went out to Connecticut and I got some film together, I mean, I was one of the schools that offered me, so. Anyway, long story short, you know, he came from Canada to there, and somehow we got his tape and liked it, and... Uh, well, I'm glad he, he's a tremendous young guy and he's really improved and like I said we, we thought we saw something in t 2012 that's why we pulled the red shirt off him and just wanted to get him going and um, you know hopefully it ends up being a great story. Adjusting to American football was something that came easy for the receiver. Just just the field was a little bit smaller um, but other than that I mean, com I, I mean the competition was was just as good I just had to Come out here and just do what I can do. Smith shows signs of what he can do when the Hawks open their season with a 31-23 victory over you and I on August 30th. The Canadian native grabbed three balls for 17 yards, counted for a touchdown while leading the team in rushing with this 35-yard rush. This is Jalen Sojek, Daily Island TV Sports. Great job as always, Jalen, and what a rush that was. Tavon Smith wasn't the only Hawkeye to have a great game against you and I, and now we'll toss it over to Whitney Blakemore, who caught up with another player who had his career, his best career showing. Whitney? Hey guys, this is Whitney Blakemore here with defensive tackle Lewis Trinkapassat. And um, Lewis, just how does it feel starting off the season, you know, with last week having your career best wins with 10 tackles, 1.5 sacks, and three tackles for a loss? I mean, it's it's a good start. It's a good step in the right direction, and uh, we just you know just keep improving now. Just it's kind of a stepping stone, and I just gotta try to have better games than that now. Iowa's defense really played a great game last weekend against you and I, only allowing them having 25 rushing yards. So, what can you still improve on, though? I mean, just just technique as far as defensive line and uh, just uh, assignments during our jobs. I know we had some miscommunications but uh, and just not giving up big plays in the passing game. And finally you know the last two meetings with Ball State you've held them and had them scoreless but they aren't the same team as 2010 so what is the defense going to have to do to get the win? Yeah I think uh, coming off a year ago they won about 10 games uh, you know they're a good running team they're, their backs are very explosive uh, their O line's athletic. Um, they're good blocking, so they're good at blocking. So uh, we just got to be fundamentally sound. Make sure we we play our best game in the rush defense and pass defense. And if they don't score again, we should have a good chance to win. All right. Well, thank you so much. And guys, back to you at the studio. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. But be sure to tune in for our pregame show every Thursday night. But before you go, this Saturday they'll be celebrating the 125th anniversary of Iowa football. That's right, Cody, and it's also the 75th anniversary of the 1939 Ironman squad where more than 150 Hawkeyes are expected to attend the game this weekend. And don't forget to pick up a print copy of pregame in tomorrow's edition of the Daily Iowan. And you can get all your updates during Saturday's game at our blog at dailyiowansports.com. We'll be bringing you live updates from Kinnick Stadium. Greta and Nick, back to you guys at the desk. But before you go, we have one story that could be the talk on campus. Queen Bee's reign is taking over a college campus today. While Beyonce is celebrating her 33rd birthday, one student at Townsend University in Baltimore took the opportunity to take the day off. According to the Baltimore Sun, she emailed her professor saying, in honor of Beyonce's birthday, she would not attend class. She said, quote, the Lord bless us all with the goddess that is Queen Beyonce Knowles Carter's birthday. Out of respect, I will not be attending class today. She later said she meant it as a joke and she accidentally sent this email to her professor. That's it for your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Tune in again with us at the same time Sunday night or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Can't pick up a copy of the Daily Iowan? Are you worried about how you're going to find out about the latest news in Iowa City and the University of Iowa? Well, look no further. You can download the Daily Iowan mobile app on your iPhone for the area's best news coverage. 